Hey guys, how you doing? JP Sarikolia here. Now today is a really difficult day for me. It's a really hard day. Um, I'm a bit sad. Uh, I think I've been since yesterday, since I started reading the news last night, in regards to uh, what is happening at DC, what happened yesterday, where they let go, I think, around 600 employees at DC. Uh, the layoffs were massive. I think a third of the workforce was let go. Uh, from the editorial side, a lot of people were let go. People have been in the company for a long, long time. A lot of creators, a lot of people involved in the whole process of, you know, the production and the communication side. Also, the, the shutting down completely of DC Direct, DC Collectibles, a company that has been, that I've been collecting since, pretty much since the beginning of DC Direct. It's, they've been in the market for 22 years. They started in 1998. And I've been collecting since around that time, you know, since 2000 probably. Uh, so it's it's sad. It's really sad to think about one company that I always uh, saw as a staple in the industry. At least this direct was always there, no matter what. And of course, Bowen that was shut down a few years back, and now this is direct. Some of those, uh, the pretty much the oldest companies in the market, which is really sad. And of course, the DC Universe app that's completely is going to be closed down. Although I kind of knew for a while that DC Universe would not work as well. Uh, I was hoping that actually they would invest more into it to allow this app to grow. But it was just a matter of time. The writing was on the wall in regards to what HBO Max would be. So that's also uh, people have been let go. So definitely it's a really, really sad. Um, it's never good when these big corporations, you know, and we know, knew this from the moment AT&T took over Warner Brothers that they would be a massive shakedown and the changes for um, DC, but I wasn't expecting to happen so soon. Of course, uh, DC has been through a turmoil in recent times, you know, with everything that's happened with um, Diamond Distributors, and it hasn't, you know, been seen in a good light by a lot of uh, comic book um, collectors and comic book readers that they, they're still supporters of the, in this case, the, the local comic book shops. So it was more kind of like a vision of DC versus the, you know, the comic book shops, you know, it was the pretty much the conversations everywhere. But this is definitely a nail in the coffin for DC in so many ways. Um, they're still, they're restructuring, we know that, and we know that DC fandom is happening pretty much two weeks from now, at the end of this month, so it's, it's definitely a not a good time. It was not a good time for, you know, for this changes. And I don't know what's going to happen with DC fandom. People are really already thinking what they can showcase after, you know, pretty much let, letting go of so many people and really cutting so many different areas of the business. So definitely I want to talk about it today. I want to get into the facts. Uh, of course, you know, it's emotional for me because I'm a big supporter of DC. I love DC. Um, as a statue collector as well as a you know collectibles person, uh, definitely it really hurts you know to see DC Direct go. But I want to get into the facts. Uh, we're gonna read an article, uh, some articles, and we're gonna just get through all of it. And of course, I, I will share how I feel about it and what I see and I foresee for the future of DC and uh, pretty much the collectibles and the comics world. And for that reason, I'm coming to Bleeding Cool. I'm using this article for reference. It says Jim Lee. Uh, Bob Harris, uh, Marie Javins, and New DC Comics Implosion Rumors. Uh, earlier today, Bleeding Cool, this is from yesterday, posted the news that DC Comics staffers, along with the rest of Warner Brothers, were undergoing a downsizing of staff. At the time, we were led to believe that the brunt would be felt by DC Universe as part of an alignment of streaming services being offered. But instead, it became rapidly clear that DC Comics editorial was being targeted in a major way for such changes with everyone describing this as the dc bloodbath or new dc implosion as on a monday as well this new dc implosion seems to have all but confirmed the departure of mark doyle executive editor at dc black label which has been very popular um uh, among uh, many comic book readers and a lot of people are really feeling the hurt on this one because they don't know what's going to happen with this black label other names repeatedly now include DC Editor-in-Chief uh, Bob Harris, uh, who has been in the business for a long, long time, Vice President of Global Publishing Initiatives and Digital Strategy Bobby Chase, uh, DC Editor Andy Quarry, uh, DC Senior Story Editor Brian Cunningham, and SVP Publishing Strategy and Support Services at DC Hank Canals. That DC Collectibles will be wound up as a line of statues and toys with the rights licensed elsewhere to the likes of Mattel or Hasbro. 
But we're now getting a better shape as to what DC Comics will be looking like going forward. Because as to whether Jim Lee remains as CCO and publisher, I am told that he will be transitioning out of that role uh, with current executive editor of Global Publishing Initiatives and Digital Strategy at DC Comics, Marie Javins, as vice president and executive editor. Um, if you know Marie, she is, uh, well, she's been involved in comics for a very long time. She is a fantastic colorist, actually. She started, I think she's been in the business for like almost four decades. Uh, and of course, she has been so important in, in recent memories with DC and the, the changes at DC. So some people are happy that she's stepping up into a better position. Uh, she is being, you know, as an editor, she's been involved in some great runs and some great uh, changes within the company. And in, in the recent months, she's been very important in maintaining people working. Um, so a lot of people are happy for, in this case, her, now her new role. But, you know, there are things that we have to consider and I'm still on the, you know, on the sidelines in regards to her position now. Now, uh, DC Children's Young Adult uh, Michelle Wells promoted, effectively running publishing and reporting to Jim for now. Uh, they understand that while Jim Lee may no longer be publisher, he will remain as CCO, a chief creative officer. But I've also been told that Eddie Choi, executive assistant to Jim Lee, and he's been working with him for many years, Sandy Resnick International Publishing, Ad Sales and Custom Creative Studio, and Sarah Haskell, Marketing Director, are out. As are Michael Schelling, Director of Publicity uh, Publishing at DC. Uh, Jonah Whelan, a VP of Marketing and Creative Services at Jim Sokolowski, a VP Comic Book Specialty and Newsstand Sales have also been laid off. So definitely you can see there's a lot of people that are involved in the, pretty much in the publishing side. They're gone. Again, none of these dismissals or appointments have been officially confirmed by DC or Warner, although there are multiple sources, I suppose that's what they meant there. They need to proofread this for sure. There are likely to be errors and changing statuses will not have been reflected either. I have done my best to investigate contradictory reports and try and find out just what is going on. But I know I will be missing things. But I am told that these layoffs will have an immediate effect on the publication of DC Comics monthly titles. I am to expect a rapid reduction of titles. If you thought DC Comics published an unhealthy percentage of Batman books, you ain't seeing nothing yet. Uh, the Bat books, most of the Justice League books, and some of the Superman books will stay safe, as with the digital line. The original graphic novel line, but a lot of comics will have to disappear, as there simply aren't enough people to work on them. Scott Snyder will be very grateful to uh, Marie Javin's elevated role. Uh, because the plan is for publishing to definitely continue, but I am to expect a greater emphasis on digital and bookstore rather than comic book shops, for now, at least. Now, um, definitely, there's a lot of information there. Um, a lot of people um, that are involved in the process, you know, you know, sometimes when we think about comics, we think about the creators, we think about the artists, we think about the writers, but there's a lot of people backstage that are really working in the process of allowing this to be produced, to be published in a timely fashion, to get into the hands of the comic book shops. So right now with everything that has, you know, is happening with AT&T, um, the way they're handling Warner Brothers is really, really sad. Um, the way that Warner Brothers is handling this is really sad. Um, I'm disappointed. Uh, I don't know what is actually, what to expect. You know, I was really looking forward to DC fandom. I wanted to see what actually, what was the plan or what they were trying to achieve DC now. I feel that they had an opportunity to really try to go after Marvel in a, in a better way, particularly on the entertainment side. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I think uh, with this move, with DC, it's hurting uh, the aspirations, but mostly it's hurting a lot of people that are very faithful to creators and people that work at DC. Um, yes, we're living in really difficult times. You know, it's something that can happen to any company. Even Marvel can face that. Um, so it's really sad, you know, and I love Jim Lee. I always knew that Jim Lee um, was not really the perfect fit to run DC in some ways because I don't think he has it in him. You know, that's my opinion, of course. I, I, I know he can do it. I, I just don't feel that that was the best role for him. I always wanted as a creator, as an, you know, and I think in a position where he is more creative and he can be involved into really also uh, helping and mentoring other artists and creators, I think that's the best position for, for Jim Lee at this point in his life. 
uh, yeah, we need people that can run a business that they sometimes they have to make the tough decisions. And unfortunately, you know, this is what's happening now. And this is what is really sad. But at the same time, it's, it's hard to see because the, the comic book world is a culture in itself. It is a, you know, and the statue world, for example, is also a subculture of this culture of comics. And, um, you know, right now with DC Direct, we, uh, you know, I was a big fan of DC for years and DC Direct. You know, I have collected many of the statues. I still own many of the statues. I'm a big fan of the cover girls, big fan of the DC designer series. You know, you got the Batman black and white that has been so popular for many years. And there's so many, you know, in the, even on the, in the action figures, they have fantastic action figures with the Batman animated series, for example, and so on and so on. So they, they, they provided a lot of good quality uh, that was easy to, to grasp, you know, because you can find them at many comic book shops, many places. But now with everything that, you know, it's happening now, of course, now this is going out the window. This is pretty much relying mostly on people in companies holding the license could be good and can be bad. You know, it wasn't until recently that SciShow got the license. It wasn't recently many of these companies started having and producing stuff for DC, which was good, you know, because they were so jealous and so zealous about, you know, of their own IPs. But now it's, it was in the hands, of course, now it's in the hands of so many other companies. They're doing a fantastic job, but also they are providing products at a higher cost. And, you know, these licenses are not costing cheaply nowadays. They're not cheap nowadays. So definitely it's something that we have to consider what's going to happen in the future. Now this direct is gone. One of the staples of the industry for many years, many comp companies, you know, fold out, many companies left, many companies close doors, many companies change into something totally different. But we had companies like DC, they're always, always there, perennial in their work. So it's gone, you know, and unfortunately many people, many creators, the possibility for work for many of the people that I care about, many of my friends, that they were freelancers too. They were working for the company as you know, sculptors, as creators, as painters, as designers. They, you know, pretty much they have no place to. You know, they're gonna have to find another place to work, and it's a very crowded market too. So definitely, it's really sad. It's really sad to to come to see of that. You know, of course, the emphasis now into the digital market, which I've been telling for a, for a while, for a long time. You follow my podcast, although I haven't been doing much podcast lately. I've been talking about it. I've been talking that it was just the writing was on the wall, that it was a bad matter of time where you're going to see more emphasis on digital and the, the emphasis is going there. And also we see a more emphasis on, you know, in this case, hard covers and soft covers and collections, which I am not against it. Um, but definitely you're going to see more of that, which means that it's going to be a more emphasis into retails outside the comic book shops. So this is another nail in the coffin of the comic book shop. And it's sad. Um, we don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of months. We don't know if Marvel is going to follow suit. Marvel is also struggling. Disney has been struggling with everything that has been happening, you know, they have all their, pretty much almost every single uh, part of the, you know, the, with the shutdowns, they have a lot of issues, a lot of problems, they have to invest a lot of money, you know, movies have been to be delayed or they have to be transferred into digital services. So it's just something that definitely everyone is hurting and the entertainment world is hurting and definitely big companies like this are no exception, uh, particularly like if I'm talking about Marvel and Disney, they have invested millions and millions and millions of dollars into things that they expected to work, but 2012, you know, 2020, not 2012, has come and has really changed the world in a way that was unexpected and has affected so many people. So yeah, it is, it's bittersweet. I don't know what's gonna happen. I, I wish the best for the people that, are, you know, that were working there and yesterday on a Monday from all days, you have to come to work just to, you know, being told that, there's not gonna be more work for you. And uh, it's really sad, particularly in a business that is not an easy, it's not as easy to find work. Um, you know, there are only big publishers you can go and many publishers are, are suffering right now. The consequences of COVID-19, you know, you, we have seen that with um, Dark Horse Comics, with IDW, Image Comics, they also have, you know, done things to, you know, they shrink as companies, they have let go of people, they have shut down so many parts of their, their, their services. Uh, so what else can be there? It's not like, you, you know, jobs are calling you um, so you can come and work for them. So it is going to be a really tough time for a lot of people. So I, my prayers are with them, with their families, um, that they are able to bounce back and hopefully we can get out of this COVID-19 that is really causing so much stress. And I'm not going to blame COVID-19 for everything that has happened in D.C. I think there's a lot of things there that need to change. And I, we knew 
a lot of bad decisions that DC made and Warner Brothers made with DC and the way they handle it. Uh, but I don't I don't see AT and T doing any, any better. Um, so now we're gonna wait for fandom, DC fandom. I don't know how it's going to be, but unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna be that great. I know a lot of people are gonna probably not even gonna tune in. You know, they a lot of people are really upset, and I don't blame them. Uh, for the way they, they, they see and how we perceive this as a, a bad, you know, a really wrong treatment towards a lot of creators and people that work for this industry. It was not really the best time to do it. Uh, it should have happened at some point, but definitely this is not the time. Um, but, you know, sometimes companies, they have to make those decisions uh, because they had no, no, no other recourse. You know, they have no resources anymore. Um, is that or completely shutting the whole thing down? And we want DC to stay and we know they're going to stay. They, they pretty much they acquire those IPs, but they're not really caring much about the people that work there. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but what is your opinion? What do you think? Um, definitely, there's a lot of things. We're going to see more news in the coming days. Um, you know, hopefully we get something good. And, and actually, it's Jim Lee's birthday today. And uh, I want to wish him a happy birthday. It's a really bittersweet moment for him, I suppose. You know, you're leading a lot of people and all of a sudden, you know, a lot of that you have to let them go. And you have, you are demoted into a different position. So I know it's a not a good day. Uh, it's a good day as a birthday celebration, but not necessarily a good day when you have to see people in the eye and tell them, hey, you know, you know, sorry, you know, we have to move on. Um, so my prayers are with him, his family, and with everyone, everyone that works at DC, the ones that are still employed there, and the ones that are let go. So my friends, thanks for watching. God bless. Take care. And I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.